Hi right, guys, just want to talk about moving your life forward one step at a time. And the reason I bring this up is that a lot of people try and jump. They're trying to leap forward because they're not happy with what they've got. So they start to try and accelerate too fast. Don't get into it. Um, the first thing you want to do is debt management. Debt management is a fundamental cornerstone of things. If you have zero debt, you're in a much better position than probably 90% of your country. Um, so debt management, debt, debt consolidation, getting rid of it, getting zero debt. I Myself, I have no loans, I have no credit card, no car finance, no mortgage, I've got zero debt. The only thing I do have is like we have rental and I get a few people say, well, why don't you just buy? Because let's, I'll be blunt with you here. The three years we've lived in Spain would have cost the same as the tax I would have given the Spanish government on purchasing a property. Plus the 20% that have been locked into that property. And a lot of people say, well, you would have paid that off by now. No, you'd have still given the, ten, the, the amount to the state. Um, there's no rush. I expect we're gonna see another recession in, in Spain at some point. So I'm not in a rush. Rentals are cheap. Rental, you don't pay any of the community fees. You don't, you're don't. hardly paying any of the tax. So please, <laughs> it's financially viable to rent in Spain. Anyway, that's, that's me though. You know, I analyze all this stuff myself. But the point is, I know what it's like when you have credit card finance, car finance and all this, because that's the West. It wants you to have that. It doesn't want you to be the guy that drives the five-year-old Honda or whatever and saves up and then buys a brand new car the one day in cash. And also when you get that in cash, you may actually walk down there the one day and think, do I really want to spend this amount of money on a piece of metal that is only for getting me to work in back? Because you may actually turn around and say, no, nah, the Honda's all right for another five years. And that's one of these fundamental things that you start to do when you start analyzing money. But it takes time. Now, I know um, Dave uh, Dave had some changes uh, from one of my previous videos that helped him uh, take his first trip to the Philippines and stuff. But there's a prime example. He, you know, he starts with taking responsibility and start dealing with finances. Start looking at how you can move things forward and change things for the better. Um, in the same way, it's, it's important that you don't sacrifice other things as well. Do not sacrifice relationships and stuff if you're in a relationship. Try and get things balanced, but also recognize that the relationship's actually the problem. Um, because sometimes you, you have a financial drain there that quite simply doesn't even recognize themselves as being a problem. Um, now, I'm not talking about my relationship at all, uh, but I understand it from previous relationships where some people run up debts and then you end up paying them off and then two months later, they've done it again. And you're like, why am I doing this? It's not my debts. But you take responsibility because they're your girlfriend at the time or whatever. Yet, there's the fundamental thing right there. They're not your wife. They're not your problem. And although you may be cohabiting, which is where I get a problem because they were both at the same address, but beyond that, you have no legal responsibility or ownership on it. Start taking ownership. And some of this, they will go, that's unfair. But guess what? They're not your debts. You know, not my problem. You manage your money better. I need to manage mine because I'm looking to go fire. Where you're going to turn around, get your financial independence and retire early. Now, retirement early is not about going and digging a hole and waiting to die. Retirement is about doing the stuff you want to do rather than doing the stuff you have to do, which is the way I look at retirement. So, back to the beginning. So, it starts with steps. The steps is get finances under control. Look at how you can control them. Can you work extra hours? Can you do something that you're doing now which is hurting you financially that you don't need to? Cut out Friday night curry. Friday night curry costs you 30 pounds. At the same time, you could do with losing a few kilos anyway. So at the end of the day, 
it's got double positive benefits. Your credit card doesn't get bashed, and at the same time, you lose a bit of weight as well. So, double benefits. In the same way, is your car on finance, and is it leased even? Because a lot of, I mean, I know a lot of companies in the UK, they push leasing. Myself, I would never lease a car. Leased is fleeced. Um, what I recommend with that sort of stuff is look, you know, if you're doing it for a company, it's the way I do it, um, is I look at what the benefit is. When I was with Carillion, I had a brand new Mercedes. Well, I had two at different times, but the, the point is they gave me brand new Mercedes. They wanted me to have a uh, Ford and I refused to have it because the way I say it, if I'm paying for it, I'm having a Mercedes and that was it. Sounds a bit stubborn, but at the end of the day, it's not free. You pay for it in your tax. You pay for it in the hassles of dealing with uh, looking after their car. And it's all about customer facing. So for me, you have to weigh that up. Why did I choose the Mercedes? The Mercedes was the highest on the energy efficiency, on the CO2, etc., which meant it had the lowest tax band. So it wasn't just about it being a Mercedes, it was the fact is I specifically chose one which was very, very economical, economical and low CO2, which meant it had a lower tax band. That is the sort of thing you should be looking at. And as I said to the company, well, I'll buy my own car, I don't mind. This is one of the things we had an argument about because it says your car should be less than five years old. And I'm like, but it's my car, it's not your car. Yes, but we have clients and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. But the, the point being is, is, even when I look at roles, I'm very, very critical on what they're telling me I have to do. This is my money, not their money. So when somebody says, you will have this, I'm going, well, I don't want it. And like, what do you mean? Well, a car in the UK, a corporate car, cost me a minimum of 100 pounds a month. And I'll tell you now, when I, they messed it up with a car when I left Carillion, and I did tell the tax authority exactly the same time, but Carillion didn't cancel it off. Um, I got a refund of £1,200, purely on what they had charged since September to April of the following year. Um, that was excess tax I would paid on the company car that I didn't have anymore. So it shows you how much of money is tied up in a vehicle that is simply being utilized for the business and yet you're paying a small fortune for it. Those sort of things you need to analyze in your own business. You need to look at where you're spending money in a company and how it's being siphoned off for you. Don't treat people as your friend. Taxman is not your friend. The banker is not your friend. The company is not your friend. 90% of these people are working against you or it's convenient for them. So instead of doing that, what you do is like, what's the benefit in me? Well, we need somebody to be on call, for me, so that's why you have to have a car, so there's no benefit for me. But what about if I park it in the yard? Yeah, but we don't want you to have it in the yard, we want it in the house. But you're not paying for that. That's my privilege, that's my driveway. And some of it sounds very petty and stubborn, but it's not, because we have to say, we had the same relating to uh, people working from home that were originally in office. Because they said, well, where am I going to work? They said, well, you can work from home. Well, who's going to pay my electricity in the internet? Well, don't you already have that? Yeah, I have that. But I treat the company the same way you would treat me, which is, that's a company resource, not for private use, etc., etc. This is private resources you can't use. <laughs> because they don't want to pay for it. Um, now, the thing is, you think I'm being very petty on this, but the reality is, the companies have to come back and offer you something in return. It's to your benefit. Everybody will take from you, given the opportunity. Every time. Now, moving forward, the other side of this being, you may actually have some other things that are going on that you're not happy with. It could be the fact that you want to find a partner. It's the same thing. Everything starts with sorting your finances out first. Then start structuring around what you actually want out of a relationship. Because it could be the fact that your relationship is something you may not even need. Because you go, right, I want to travel. Why do you need somebody else to travel with you? 
because a lot of the time if you're going to marry somebody for example say from the Philippines the visa issues you ain't going to travel I'll be honest for 99 percent of the people they will never travel in the same way unless you can actually get them moved on to a US passport UK passport whatever European passport um, because of the limitations on visa so the point being is you're looking at at least a five-year window in most cases to actually make that happen so put that on your list because you may actually just want to travel and if you want to travel you don't need a relationship are you looking for companionship that's a different thing and if it's companionship then are you going to move to this other country or are you going to the find somebody in your local area how's the relationship going to work are you going to protect your assets are you going to just have a three-day relationship where they have their assets you have yours and you just hop to each other's houses so there's no real uh, legal commitment or risk there um, all these things have to be taken into account but it all starts with taking steps I think too many people out there do not sit and plan enough and if you sit and do this with most things you will find you can find a lot of solutions that you didn't realize were there before now if I take another one here if you already have some skills which most of you do in some form a lot of you guys don't recognize it but you do um, but let's say you're a mechanic a mechanic could teach uh, basic car maintenance on a Saturday afternoon and make extra cash. They could have people around the house and you could teach them a little course on it. You could do videos on things like Udemy or whatever and then sell your, your courses. You could do one-to-one -one tuition where people could actually come around and learn off you. There's extra cash generation in there. But you're also upgrading your skills. You're no longer just the mechanic. You're now in the realms of teaching, lecturing, videography, whatever, you know, it's multiple skill sets and you're adding them to your bow. And at the same time, somebody says, wow, really love the, the videos on the mechanic stuff. Could you come down and teach my mechanics about this? You know, we, go, we do a school, a friend of mine does one on air conditioning. He's never in the UK. He's always in China. Why? Because he goes and teaches the skill apprenticeship thing to the Chinese kids. And he's paid about 800 to 1,000 pounds a day to go into China and run classes with about 20 or 30 Chinese kids. When I say kids, they're um, learning how to install air conditioning stuff to European standards. But the point being is, where did it start? Well, he was an air conditioning engineer. And then he, I come across him with doing asset management. And then he started doing this relating to the skills council. And then they sort of formulated onto teaching other people. And then he ended up in China making more money tax-free than he was making before. How? Because it started by recognizing there's more potential out there. When I started, I started um, originally in electronics. And I, I moved and they and gain skills as they went. I didn't stick to one thing. Everything I've seen is an opportunity. It's like now there's something come up recently where I know there's an opportunity to get into the videography and audio and doing more. Um, and I'll take that potential once it's there. Always open yourself to anybody else's knowledge. Always take mentoring on. There is no wrong time to ask somebody, could you help me with this? Can you help me develop this? Can I improve this? There is no wrong time for that. It's always worth collating these people. First thing I did about, like I said, with the aircon stuff, I spoke to a friend, Steve, and Steve is putting together the shopping list for the aircon because I know he'll pick the right brands. He knows which is the best stuff. He knows which is the uh, stuff not to buy and avoid because it'll break within six months, but also the excess stuff that people love to sell you, you'll never use. So what did I do? I outsourced that to a, a good friend to put that together for me. And that's, that's one of the important things is recognize your strengths and weaknesses and utilize them. The other thing is maybe you're not a mechanic. Maybe you've got something else, maybe you do cycling. Now, there was something that came up the other day. Um, I, was, it was, I think it was in the Netherlands where a guy takes um, old, old people out on a rickshaw. He, he mounts on the front of his bike and he does that at the weekends and stuff. 
Now he started an entire enterprise off the side of that. Now I know it says volunteers, but I am sure there must be some financial gain in there somewhere. Um, not not knocking the guy at all, but the point is, even from just cycling, there is that side where you can actually see an opportunity there. There could be to branch out in the community and do something worthwhile because a it improves your social aspect in the sense that cycling can be quite boring and lonely. Uh, instead, you can have a couple of pensioners sat in the front, you're wheeling around the local town, having a chat, getting fit at the same time, and you're doing being a good Samaritan at the same time. On top of that, you could be teaching bicycle maintenance. On top of that, you could be doing stuff around how to um, recognize things within a bike. You know, at the end of the day, what's a good bike to buy? What are you looking for? There's so many things out there and all you guys have got specific skills. And a lot of people don't use their hobbies either. It's like my brother. My brother, if you ask him about Wade, Clarice Cliff, a lot of these porcelain things, uh, you know, antiques and things, he can look at it and tell you how much that's worth, just like that. But at the same time, he knows how to identify the faults. He knows how to uh, check the imperfections. He knows when it was produced. He has It's all in his head. But at the same time, it's not something he's cashing in beyond buying antiques and stuff himself. At the same time, he could formulate an entire course on that. And do you know what? Anybody buying that stuff would actually turn around and say, can you look at this for me? And with that sort of thing, you go, yeah. I'll charge you ten pounds. I'll look at anything for ten pounds. And what we're talking on YouTube or whatever, or <laughs> at an online auction website. But if physically, you can charge a rate or whatever on there, and you may end up with something completely different coming out of a simple idea. And this is what I'm saying. You guys have got a lot of potential out there, but it takes steps to move things forward. And it's not about um, I want a new car and then going out and get it on finance. You can afford to buy it in cash, but you need to turn around and say, I'm gonna generate more income, I'm gonna reduce uh, my cost of living, how am I gonna formulate a plan to get that? That is taking the right steps. Wanna to move to the Philippines, wanna marry some of the Philippines, wanna do something different, formulate plans. It all starts with steps. Get yourself a little bit of, bit of paper, and just start formulating ideas, getting things together, how are you gonna do this? And do you know what? It doesn't matter if you sit and cross nine out of the 10 out because you only need one to work. But in reality, in a lot of this stuff, it's not even that hard. We're not talking about you starting a new business from scratch. We're talking about you recognizing things like debt management, financial management, your own skills and abilities, your own flaws, your own imperfections in the sense that if you drink too much, smoke too much, spend too much on food, where can you reduce it? Because all three of those have health benefits, which means that your life insurance, or your health, well, life and health insurance could be beneficial as well, as, as well as your expectancy. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching.